set this up. So, uh, so I'm dreaming, and I get this song, and I woke up in the morning, and I wrote it down, and I. Hey dad, who's that girl on the phone? I got a feeling she's gonna make you her own. Give me one reason and I'll run you right into a tree. <laughs> you combed your hair, you brushed your teeth. I got a feeling that's not for me. Give me one reason and I'll run you right into a tree. She's sitting on my couch. Oh, Daddy, that's going too far. Dad, let me speak from my heart. No two-legged girl's gonna tear us apart. Give me one reason and I'll mess you up. Give me one reason to give you a face only a dog could love. Give me one reason and I'll run you right into the street. With buses and trucks. Cars. Give me one reason and I'll run you right into a tree. Did she split? <laughs> she did last time. It was awesome. <laughs> See, I make you laugh even when I don't want to make you laugh. <laughs> so when I was in high school, uh, I knew this guy. Imagine, he's the crazy guy in high school, okay? He would give me absolute and perfect directions to run into every cute girl in the hallway in embarrassing ways, all right? <laughs> so uh, after we got out of high school, he gave me a call. He's like, hey, you want to go to a party? I said, yeah, sure. Why don't you come over and pick me up? He comes over, and I'm glad that he didn't uh, come into my house because I think he had been sampling the evening's drinks. At any rate, uh, I got into the passenger seat of his car, who else was going to drive? Come on. And I get in the passenger seat of his Nissan 300ZX, beautiful red car. And we're driving, and we get to this kind of a secluded area, and he says, hey man, have you ever driven a car? And, uh, you know, the responsible guy said, oh, no, no, man, I, I haven't, but I don't want to drive your 300ZX. And then he pulls over, and the teenage speed demon got out of the car, and I'm Going around the side, you know, I trade seats with him or put my seatbelt on. Put in the clutch. Yeah, I was a stick. First gear. <laughs> and he says, all right, go for it. Go, go to the right a little bit. So I went a little bit to the right. Go to the left a little bit. A little bit to the left. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling the need. And the car is saying, Rusty, I feel the need. The need for speed. So I put it in second gear, pull out the clutch, and here we go. And I'm going to the right a little bit. He says, a little bit to the left. Oh, not so much to the left. <clears throat> and I took the left side of the car over the left-hand curb, and I popped both tires, and I bent both rims. And that voice, the car had a little voice in it. And it said something like, your lights are on. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, for all that technology, I wish it had said, you shouldn't be driving this car, you're blind. <laughs> Well, don't trust that guy. He can't see. He, he's drunk. I'll give you directions. So, uh, so we're sitting there in the car, and, and all it said was, your lights are on, and the radio kept playing, the crash test dummies, and, uh, and it's silent, and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, man. And I'm imagining myself in an episode of CSI, and I wipe my fingerprints off the steering wheel, and I'm not the shit, you know. We get out of the car, and he locks it. We're walking to his house about a mile away, and he says, oh, man. He says, well, I guess this is a story to tell the grandkids. And I was thinking, that's a story to add to my comedy routine. <laughs> and he says, uh, uh, well, what am I going to tell my friends? And I thought, what are you going to tell the insurance company? What are you going to tell your parents? Forget your friends. <laughs> he says, no, I, I, I know what I'll tell them. I swerved to miss a cat. No, I hate cats. I swerved to miss a dog. So that was the story. I swerved to miss a dog. And we get to his house. And I'm like, Brent. Where's your car? He said, oh, guys, I, I swerved to miss a dog, and I, I crashed it. 
you're so stupid, that wouldn't have happened if Rusty had been driving. <laughs> So I meet a lot of people, uh, and I'm happy to meet you later on tonight. And a lot of people are kind of afraid of what they're going to say to a blind person. And they'll start saying, did you see, oh, why you shouldn't, did you watch that movie? And then all of a sudden they're all feeling all embarrassed, and, oh, and I feel bad for them. Sometimes people don't even come close enough. They, you know, they'll be back out here, and they'll, they'll say, he's got a disability. And I think to my head, I got a disability, I got that ability, I got all kinds of ability. <laughs> so I got songwriting ability, and I thought to myself, you know, I think I'm going to write a little song about things you shouldn't say to someone who's blind. <laughs> Probably should start with, have you ever driven a car? But anyway. <laughs> hey, buddy, can you lend me a hand? Gotta get to the airport, but before 5 a.m. It's probably something you're not gonna say to someone who's blind. Give me the green one, it's right over there. Take a little off the top when you cut my hair. It's probably something you're not gonna say to someone who's blind. Oh, take my car, it's not that far. Hey, buddy, can you help me paint my house? You mean nobody told you you were white? Gotta could help you figure that out. Doctor, doctor, do you think I'm gonna die? As long as I don't not break, I'm gonna be just fine. There's probably something you don't wanna say to someone who's blind. Mm -hmm. Throw me that knife, <laughs> to the right. Hey, watch the way you throw that thing. Pick me up at eight and don't be late. Hey, how blind are you anyway? <laughs> you don't mind if I'm a little ugly, do ya? I thought the skirt and high heels might fool you. That's probably something you shouldn't say to someone who's blind. It's probably something you maybe shouldn't say. Does this skirt make me look fat? <laughs> to someone who's blind. Thank you very much.